Okay, so in this video, I'm going to set up MySQL Multimaster Replication. So in here, I've got two virtual machines, which is running CentOS 7, and I've named them as DB1 and DB2. And I have also updated the host entries because I'm going to use the host name for communication. Okay, so let's log into our machines. So I'm going to create a Tmux session and I'm going to log into my DB1 and let's split the pane horizontally and I'm also going to log into DB2. Okay, and I'm also going to synchronize the pane. So whatever I type now is going to be synchronized across these two panes. Okay, so just to give you an overview of how we can achieve this, basically uh, we want to configure a master slave replication on both of uh, the sides so firstly i'm going to configure db1 as a master and db2 as a slave and once that is done then we will configure db2 as a master which is also a slave and db1 as a slave which is a master so by doing this uh, we achieve a bi-directional synchronization so let's dive right into it firstly i'm going to install uh, MariaDB server so yum-y install MariaDB server okay so now that the server package is installed let's start and enable the service so to do that in one single command systemctl enable minus minus now the name of the service is MariaDB so it's gonna enable the service and it's also going to start the service okay let's see the port so let's start minus tnlp pipe grep 3306 so the port is open okay let's set the root password for our mysql so mysql secure installation is the command enter set the root password yes enter the password for the root user okay enter 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 done okay let's create the password file so we don't have to basically use the password again and again on our cli so the user is root and the password i set for this user is root that's it let's see if we can log into our database so mysql yes we can log in let's quit out of here and i'm going to stop the synchronization okay now on my db1 if i log into mysql and if i do show databases so we got this default database and we also have this mysql database and if i do show tables from mysql i can see this user and host so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select user and host from mysql dot user this is going to give me all the user with their host so this is the root user for local host so there is no user present uh, currently present in this database except the root user so firstly let's create the replication user so grant replication slave on star dot star 2 i'm going to name the replication user as repl at the rate and this time i'm going to give the percentage because this user is now accepting any remote connections so because we are not replicating any specific database to any specific slave we are using percentage and identified by and the password i'm going to set for this user is repl okay flush privileges cool so if I now do the same select query, we can see the RPL user present here. So because uh, in later on we will configure DB2 as a master, we also have to create the RPL user there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to take a dump of this MySQL database into a mysql.sql file. And we got this SQL file, I'm going to copy that to my DB2. And that is copied okay now let's go ahead and configure the master so in my db1 i'm going to edit slash etc my.cnf file 
in here under my sql dig that i'm going to mention the server id as one and i'm also going to mention the log binary as my sql bin that's it so this is you can name this anything if you are replicating a particular database you can give the name of that database and it will name it that uh, i'm just using my sql bin just for this demo so save this file restart mariadb okay now if i log in and do show master status i can see the binary file and i also see the position cool so that's it so let's go to our db2 here i got this mysql.sql file so firstly let's log into our database and show databases so we have this default database let's select user and host from mysql.user so we don't have any repl user so firstly i'm going to restore this mysql.sql file which we just copied so the command is mysql the name of the database is mysql and restore this mysql.sql file okay let's log in and if i do select user and host from mysql.user i can see the repl user now cool okay let's go to slash etc my.cnf now and under mysql d i'm just going to mention the server id as two and that's it uh, because this time we are not replicating any particular database i'm just going to uh, mention the server id and save this file and restart mariadb so the service is restarted let's log into mysql and let's configure our slave so if I now do show slave status, so you see there is this empty set because we have not configured it. So let's configure the slaves. So change master to master host it's db1 master user is repl master password is repl and the master log file is this file and master log position that is 245 cool enter let's start the slave okay and if i do show slave status now cool so I can see that the seconds behind master is zero. So the setup is fine. Now I can also see that the slave IO is running and SQL is also running. And to verify the binary file, we can see that on DB1, the file is MySQL bin followed by one. And we got this MySQL bin followed by one and the log position that is 245, which is same as our master. Cool. So that is the master slave setup done now let's quit out of our database now we have achieved this one directional sync uh, which is uh, from db1 we are synchronizing the databases now we want to do the same from db2 so we, we need to configure db2 as a master so let's edit this etc my.cnf file and in here i'm just going to mention the log bin as mysql bin you can name it anything and save this file and quit and let's restart mariadb so now that is restarted let's log into our mysql and if i do show master status i can see this uh, binary file and this position cool so now because i have already created the rpl user and I have restored it on DB2. I don't have to create it again. So I'm just going to do change master2 to, uh, to configure the slave. But before that, if I do show slave status, so you see this is this empty set. And if I do show process list, we only got this process uh, as a master process, which is replicating uh, the database. Okay now we need to configure the slave so change master to the master host 
this time it is db2 and the master user is same which is repl the master password is repl and the master log file is mysql bin followed by one which we can copy from here and master log position that is 245 that's it let's start our slave and now if i do show slave status cool so seconds behind master it's zero so that means the setup is good we can also see the slave io is running and sql is also running this is the log file and the position so everything is looking good now so now we can test our setup cool so i'm going to log out from everywhere so from my db1 i'm going to first see what databases we have so mysql minus e and show databases so we got this default databases here and if i execute the same query uh, command so we got this default databases cool now from my db1 i'm going to create a database so create database let's say test and if i do show databases i got this test database here and mysql minus e show databases i got this test database here cool so that is working now from my db2 i'm going to create a table so create table and let's say dot db1 and this table has one field which is name and it is taking a variable character of length 10 so that's it and now if i do mysql minus e show tables from test we got this db1 here and from my db2 if i execute the same command we can see the table so that is working indeed so let's log in and now i'm going to insert some values from db1 so insert into test dot db1 values and let's say nawaz okay select star from test dot db1 and we can see the data here and select star from test dot db1 we can uh, i need to mention the mysql minus e here so select star this will be inside this quotations and mysql minus e so we can also see the data here and from my db2 if i just do mysql minus c so let's see if i can drop any database so drop database test and if i do mysql minus e uh, show databases so we have deleted the test database from here and show databases the test database is gone so that's all i wanted to show you you can definitely play around with that etc my.cnf file and see what works for your environment so yeah that's all i wanted to show you see you guys in my next video take care bye bye